everyone. I am Hardik. And I am Samara. Welcome to the speech and drama performance day. Mm -hmm. Through this workshop, we've gained so much of confidence, built on our teamwork, improved our speech and diction, developed our personality, worked on imagination building, and improvisation, and all this in just a few sessions. This is an interactive performance day, and we would like you all to be a part of it. So, are you ready? Yeah. We, we can, can hear you. Are you all ready for the rocking dance number? Yes. I can hear you. Yes. Presenting the A song. Would you like some chocolates? Yeah, sure. But don't tell anyone. Where shall we sit then? Um, I think that's a great spot. Ah, I told you not to sit on a porcupine. Let's see what happens next. The Academy for, for Creative, Creative Expression, Expression presents a dramatized version of a bronze level poem, The, the Porcupine by Roald Dahl. Please, Saturday, I shout away! But that's my pocket money boy. This week my pens are being gone. My heart been as good as gold. So after that look to see, my generous father gave to me like lightning down the road I ran until I reached the beach of my life. And bought the chocolates of my dreams. A great big bag of bars and cream. There is a secret place I know where I quite often like to go. Beyond the woods behind the rock, super place of cousin chalk. When I arrived, I quickly found a comfy looking little mound. It was quietly brown and earthy brown. Just then I thought to sit down. I will sit here till morning long, until my chocks are gone. I sat, I screamed, I jumped a foot. Would you believe that I have put the tender little rock of mine upon a giant porcupine? My backside seemed to catch on fire. A hundred red hot bits of fire. A hundred prickles sticking in and puncturing my precious skin. I ran for hope. I shouted, Mom! Behold the prickles in my bum. My mom, who always kept her head, went down to look and then she said, I personally am not about to try to pull those prickles out. I think a job like this requires the services of Mr. Myers. Mr. Myers, the dentist? No. Mom, why don't you have a go? I begged her twice. I begged her thrice, but low enough, never take advice. Enter the dreaded Mr. Myers, waving a pair of massive flyers. This is, he cried with obvious glee, a new experience for me. Quite honestly, I can't pretend that I had ever pulled things from this end. <laughs> started pulling one by one and yelling, My, my, <laughs> what fun! <laughs> he shouted, he shouted. I shouted, help! I shouted, ow! He said, it's nearly over now. For heaven's sake, don't squirm about. Here goes the lost one coming out. Ow! So that, that was that. that. Oh, oh, what a day and what a but by the way, I mean my little fight. Walk your mind, surround themselves with pretty spikes. It is to stop some silly clown from squashing them by sitting down. Don't, don't copy me. Don't be a twist. Be sure to look before you sit. Ah! Ronald Al is known for his short stories and poems. Let's listen to one of his poems. The, the Academy, Academy for, for Creative, Creative Expression, Expression presents, presents a dramatized version of a silver level poem, 
Little Red, Red Riding, Riding Hood and the Wolf by Roald Dahl. As soon as Wolf began to feel that he would like a decent meal, he went and knocked on Grandma's door. When Grandma opened it, she saw the hawk sharp white teeth, the horrid grin, and Wolfie said, May I come in? Poor Grandmama was terrified. He's going to eat me up, she cried, and she was absolutely right. They ate her up in one big bite, but Grandmama was small and tough, and Wolfie waited. That's not enough. I haven't yet begun to feel that I have had a decent meal. He ran around the kitchen yelping. No, 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 no! I've got to have another helping. Then added with a frightful leer. Ha, 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 ha! I'm therefore going to wait right here till little Miss Red Riding Hood comes home from walking in the wood. The wolf quickly put on grandma's clothes. Of course he hadn't eaten those. He put on, he dressed himself in coat and hat. He put on shoes and after that, he even brushed and curled his hair. And then he said, in came the little girl in red. She stopped. She's dead. And then she said, Grandma, what great big ears you have. All the better to hear you with. The wolf replied. Grandma, what great big eyes you have. Little Red Riding Hood said. All the better to see you with. The wolf, wolf. replied. He sat there watching her and smiled. He thought, I'm going to eat this child. Compared with the old grandmama, she is going to taste like Chandra. Little Red Riding Hood said, But Grandma, what a lovely great big furry coat you have. That's wrong. The wolf cried. Have you forgot to tell me what big teeth I've got? Ah, well, no matter what you say, I'm going to eat you anyway. The small girl smiled. One eyelid flickers. She whips a pistol from her knickers. She aims it at the creature's head. And bang, bang, bang! She shoots him dead. A few weeks later, in the woods, I came across Miss Riding Hood. But what a change! No cloak of red, no silly hood upon her head. And she said, Hello! Hello! And do please know, my lovely furry, one skin coat! Arthur Asher was an American playwright, essayist, and a complete figure of the 20th century American theatre. Death of a Salesman is one of his well known plays. Academy for Creative Expression presents Dramatic Monologue Death of a Salesman. <laughs> I'd like to have a good talk with you, Howard. Waiting. Sorry to keep you waiting. I've just been over to your village. What's that, Howard? Well, it's a mobile. Uh, we just got the delivery last night. What did you do with it? Well, I want it for recording, but you can do many things with it. Like, no way. You know what? I'll take my band saws, my hobbies, and my, mo my mobile, and off we go. It's the most fascinating relaxation I've ever found. I think I'll get one myself. Sure. It's only hundred and a half. Suppose you want to hear Jack Benny, and you can't be home at that time. Uh, you just tell the maid to switch on the radio, and there's Jack Benny's program. That's a wonderful machine, because oh. many of the times when I'm on the road, I think to myself, what I must be missing on the radio. But. Don't you have a radio in the car? Well, yeah. But whoever thinks of turning it on. Okay, but aren't you supposed to be in Boston? Well, Howard, that's what I want to talk to you about. Okay. You got a minute? Okay, what's the problem? Well... Wait, wait, wait. wait. Geeks, didn't you crack up anymore? Oh, no, Howard. Geeks, you had me there worried for a minute. 
Well, Howard, I've come to the decision that I'd rather not travel anymore. Not travel anymore? Uh, remember Christmas time, Howard, when you had the party here? You were selling things of sport for me here in town. Uh, with us? Well, sure. Uh, oh, yeah, I remember. Well, I didn't find any spot for you, Howard. Well, the kids are all grown up. They don't need me around anymore. If I could take home $65 a week, I could swing it. Okay, um, see, you're a road man. You have a road business. And I just have a half a dozen salesmen on the floor yet. God, I would have never asked the favor of any man before. But I was in this firm when your father brought you here in his arms. Hey, really, but see... But your father came to me the day you were born and asked me what I thought of the name of Howard. Okay, Willie, really, I appreciate that. But see, I don't have a single solitary spot out here. If I'd have it, I'd slam it on your face here. But I don't have it. Howard, all I need to set my table is $40 a week. You gotta admit, business is business. Business is definitely business. But just listen for a minute. Howard, if I could take home $40 a week, that's all I'd need, Howard, please. That's not possible. Howard, please listen. Howard, please. When I grow up, I want to be like Superman. Superman, I want to be like Isabel. Who's Isabel? She's the bravest girl I've ever seen. Do you want to meet her? Yes. Do, Do you want to meet her? The Academy for Creative Expression presents The Adventures of Isabel by Ogden Nash. The Adventures of Isabel by Ogden Nash. Isabel met an enormous bear. Isabel, Isabel didn't care. The bear was ugly. The bear's big mouth was cruel and cavernous. Isabel, glad to meet you. How do you do, Isabel? Now I eat you. Isabel, Isabel, didn't worry. Isabel, Isabel, didn't scream or scurry. She washed her hands and straightened her hair. And then Isabel quietly ate the bear. What a night! The witch's beard was crossed and wrinkled. The witch's cuffs with teeth were sprinkled. Ha <laughs> ha, Isabel! Old witch girl. I'll turn you into an ugly toad. Isabel, Isabel, didn't worry. Isabel, Isabel, didn't scream or scurry. She showed no range. She showed no rancor. But she turned the witch into milk and drank her. William Shakespeare is one of the best known playwrights of all times. He has written countless plays like The Taming of the Shrew and The Merchant of Venice. The Academy for Creative Expression presents a dramatized version of a gold plus plus level extract for The Taming of the Shrew by William Shakespeare. I'll attend her here. And woo her with some spirit when she comes. See that she will. Why, I'll tell her plain. And she sings as sweetly as Nightingale. See that she frowns. Why, I'll say she looks as clear as the morning rose is newly washed for you. If she denied the way, I'll pray for thee. And I shall ask her back and when we marry. But here she comes now, and the truth shall be seen. Good morning, Kate. So that's your name, I hear? Well, have you heard? But something hard of hearing. They call me Catherine, they do talk. You lie, in faith. For you were called plain Kate. And Bonnie Kate. And sometimes Kate the Cursed. But Kate, the prettiest Kate in Christendom. Kate of Kate Hall. My super lazy Kate. For dainties for all Kates. And therefore, Kate, take this of me, Kate, of my consolation. Go with thy mindless place in every town. Thy virtues spoke of, thy beauty sounded. Yet not so deeply as they 
belong myself. I moved to Woody, my wife. Moved in good time? Let him that moved you hither. Remove your hands. I knew you at first. You were a movable. Why? What's a movable? A joint stool. Thou is it. it. Come, sit in me. Asses are made to bear, and so are you. Women are made to bear, and so are you. No such chair as you, if me you me. Alas, good Kate, I will not burden thee, for knowing thee to be young and light. Too light for such a weight to, as you to catch, and yet as heavy as my weight should be. Come, come, you wasp. In faith, you were too angry. If I be a waspish, best beware my sting. Who knows now for a wasp does wear his sting? In his tail. In his tongue. Whose tongue? Yours, if you talk of tails. And so, farewell. What? With my tongue in your tail? Nah, come again. Good Kate, I am a gentleman. That I'll try. I swear I'll cuff you if you strike again. If you strike me, you're no gentleman. Come, Kate, come. You must not look so soft. It is my fashion when I see a crab. Why? He has no crab. There is. There is. Then show it me. Had I a glass, I would. What? You mean my face? Well aimed to such a young one. Now by St. George, I'm too young for you. Yet you are withered. Just with care. I care not. Now here you came in suit. You escape not so. I chafe you if I tarry. Let me go. No, not a whit. I find you passing gentle. You was told to me that you would cry and coy and sunny. But now I find a poor, a very liar. But thou art blessing, gamesome, passing courteous, but slow in speech, yet as sweet as springtime flowers. Why does the world report them that Kate doth live? Oh, let me see thee walk. Thou is not hold. Where did you study all this goodly speech? It is extempore, my mother wit. O oh, witty mother, witless her son. Am I not wise? Yet, keep you warm. Marry, so I mean, sweet Catherine, in thy bed. And therefore, setting all this chat aside, thus, in plain terms, your father had consented that you shall be my wife, your dowry agreed on. And will you, nil you, I will marry you. For I am, he am born to tame you, kid, and bring you from a wild kid to a kid comfortable as other household kids. Alfred Lord Tennyson was the first Baron Tennyson and a poet laureate of Great Britain and Iceland. One of his well-known poems are the charge of the Light Brigade. The Academy for Creative Expression presents a dramatized version of a gold level poem, The Charge of the Light Brigade, by Alfred Lord Tennyson. Half a league, half a league, half a league onwards, all in the valley of death, Lord the 600. Forward the Light Brigade, charge for the guns, he said, into the valley of death, Lord the 600. Forward the Light Brigade! Was there a man dismayed? Not though the soldier knew. Someone had blundered. There's not to make reply. There's not to reason why. There's but to do and die into the valley of death. Lord the 600. Get into the right of them. Get into the left of them. Cannon in front of them. Wild and thunder, storm that with shot and shell. Boldly they rode and well, into the jaws of death, into the mouth of hell, rode the six hundred. Flashed all the sabres bare, flashed as they turned in air, sabring the gunners there, charging an army, while all the world wondered, plunged in the battery smoke. Right to the line they broke, Cossack and Russian, read from the sabre stroke, then they rode back, but not, not the six hundred. Cannon to the right of them, cannon to the left of them, cannon behind them, volleyed 
then thunder. Storm that with shot and shell, they that had fought so well, while horse and hero fell, came back through the jaws of death, back from the mouth of hell. All that was left of them, left of 600. When can their glory fade? Oh, why charge they made? All the world wondered. Honor the charge they made. Honor the light brigade. Honor the noble 600. Lord Dahl has, Lord Dahl has written many novels, poems, and stories. One of them is The Boy. The Academy for Creative Expression presents or, or presents a dramatical extract, The Boy by Wall Dahl. What is it? Sir, please may I get excused to go to the laboratory? Certainly not. You should have gone before. But sir, please sir, I didn't want to go before. I didn't know. <laughs> Whose fault was that? Now get on with your work. But sir, please sir, oh sir, let me go. One more word out of you and you will be in trouble. Then 
My blood was angry, and a chill ran upon my spine. And I thought, was it Shakespeare's tragedy or mine? Again, I ventured to the lady. Will you please take off that hat? It sounds the blackest of all tragedies. And the lady did persist. Dear lady, do you hear? I bawled at her. Will you please take off that hat? She didn't hear. Then I thought, the lady needs a stone and drastic cure. Then taking the laws into my hands and power into my legs, I kicked off that hat. And I found that the hat was only a wig and the lady's head was born. Good Lord, before she called my good self with a thousand names. Then the drama had to cease and poor William's tragedy became a truly comic piece. So who all from the audience sit and watch TV on Sundays? I do, I do, I do. That's so boring. Why don't you do something fun like bowling or surfing? That's a good idea. Then what are we waiting for? The Academy for Creative Expression presents a conversational English piece at the bowling alley with words beginning with S and SH and it's up to you to find them. Oh, hi, a funny set. This is the third time I've lost. I want to watch Snow White. I want to watch Soccer. Snow White. Soccer. Snow White. Soccer. Today is Sunday and instead of watching the soccer game, let's do something fun. I've got an idea. Let's go to the bowling alley. And if it's not too late, we could go surfing. Surfing? Are you mad? Won't there be sharks in the sea? And I can't bowl to save my soul. Surfing the internet, silly. <laughs> Come on, don't be such a fun spot. Try something new and exciting. Okay, but shouldn't I change my t-shirt? Doesn't it look shabby? Oh no, you take forever. Even a girl can change fast. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Let's go now. Coupons, please. Thank you. Let's go to lane number seven. I'll go first. Yay, I got 40 points. I'll go next. Oh, I got 30 points. I really need a strike. I would have all 10 pins out. Anyway, it's your turn. Oh, the ball is in the gutter. Gutter? I don't see any potholes here. Anyway, Darish, it's your turn. Oh, I got a strike. Enough. In the Rialto, you have rated me. 
about my money and my use hands. Still, I've borne it with a patient shrug for suffering, the badge of all our tribes. You call me a misbeliever, a cutthroat dog, and spit upon my Jewish gabardine? Yet, yet I've borne it with a patient shrug. Go to them, you come to me, and you say so. Shylock, shall we have some monies? You say so. You that void your rim upon my beard and put me into spawn a stranger car over your thresholds. Money is your suit. Well then, now it seems you need my help. Can I call in 3,000 ducats? Is it possible? Or shall I bend down low? In the bond man's key. William Shakespeare is one of the best known playwrights of all times. He's written countless plays like The Merchant of Venice and The Taming of the Shrew. The Academy for Creative Expression presents a gold plus plus level extra from Macbeth by William Shakespeare. Tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow. Creeps in his petty pace from day to day. To the last syllable of recorded time. Can all our yesterdays and lighted things. The way to dusty death. Out, out, brief candle. Light by the walking shadow. A poor player that struts and frets his are upon the stage. And then is heard no more. It is the tale. Told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying nothing. Archie, have you ever tried to clone yourself? Clone myself? I never tried. I, well, I have. Let's see what happens. The, the Academy for Creative, Creative Expression, Expression presents Clone Myself by Ken Nesbitt. I clone myself by Ken Nesbitt. I clone myself on Friday night by Saturday at 3. My clone had made another clone. They both look just like me. They both like me and jumped like me and acted like me too. They were my clones and used my stuff and the things I do. But worst of what? all, they made more clothes who then made even more. And soon my house was overrun and I was getting sore. They wouldn't do my homework clean my room or make my bed. They wouldn't wash the dishes or do anything I said. Instead, they sat and watched TV and played computer games, paid up all my papers and and now they like to call each other names. And now they like to stay up late and keep me wide awake. My life is wrecked, but I hope you learn from my mistake. Don't ever try to clone yourself, but if you ever do, you better hope your clones are not exactly you. Martin Luther King was a legend. He fought for freedom. Would you like to hear his speech? Yes. What are we waiting for? Let's the, go. The Academy for Creative Expression presents a dramatized version of a silver level speech by Martin Luther King. That one day the station will rise up and live out the true meaning of its dream. Will all these proofs to be self evident that all men are created equal? I have a dream that one day on the red hills of Georgia, the sons of former slaves and the sons of former slave owners will be able to sit down together at the table of brotherhood. I have a dream that one day it is the state of Mississippi, a desert state, sweltering with the heat of injustice and oppression, will be transformed into an ocean of freedom and justice. I have a dream that one day my four little children will live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, by the content of their character. I have a dream today. I have a dream that one day, the state of Alabama, whose governors make our present teacher with the world, 
of interposition and nullification will be transformed into situation where little black boys and white girls will be able to work together as brothers and sisters. I have a dream today! W. H. Auden was an English-American poet. His poems were known for his stylish and technical achievements. This poem is about a Jewish refugee living in New York. The Academy for Creative Expression presents a silver level poem, Refugee Blues, by W. H. Auden. Say this city has 10 million souls. Some are living in mansions, some are living in holes. Yet there's no place for us, my dear. Yet there's no place for us. Once we had a country, and we thought it fair. You look in the atlas, and you'll find it there. But we cannot not go there now, now, my dear. But we cannot go there now. In the village churchyard, there grows an old yew. Every spring, it blossoms anew. Old, old passports can't do that, my dear. Old passports can't do that. The council banned the table and said, if you have no passport, you're officially dead. But we, we are still alive, my dear. But we are still alive. Went to a committee. They offered me a chair. Asked me politely to return next year. But where shall we go today, my dear? But where shall we go today? Went to a public meeting. The speaker got up and said, if we let them in, They'll steal our daily bread. He was talking, talking of, of you and, and me, my dear. He, he was, was talking, talking of you and me. Thought I heard the thunder rumbling in the sky. It was Hitler over Europe saying, They must die. We were in his mind, my dear. We were in his mind. Saw a poodle in a jacket. Fastened with a pin. A door opened and a cat let in. But they burned the German Jews, my dear. But they burned the German Jews. Went down the harbor and stood up on a key. Saw fish swimming as they were free. Only ten feet away, my dear. Only ten feet away. Went to the woods. Saw the birds in the trees. They had no politicians and sang at their ease. They burned the human race, my dear. They burned the human race. Dream I saw a building with a thousand floors, a thousand windows, a thousand doors. Not, Not one, one of them was ours, my dear. Not one of them was ours. Stood on the great plain in the falling snow. Ten thousand soldiers marched to and fro. Looking for you and me, my dear. Looking for you and me. Have you seen the tummy beast? The tummy beast? What are we waiting for? Let's, Let's go meet, meet him. The Academy for Creative Expression presents a dramatized version of the Tummy Beast by Roald Dahl. What up to me? I said to mommy, who is this person my tummy? He must be small and very thin or how would he have gotten in? My mother said from where she sat, It isn't nice to talk like that. It's true. I cried. I swear with mommy, there is a person in my tummy. He talks to me at night in bed. He's always asking to be fed. Throughout the day, Throughout the day he screams at me, demanding sugar buns for tea. He tells not a cent to go and raise with the biscuit tin. I know quite well, it's awfully wrong to guzzle the food all day long. But, Mummy, please, uh, believe me, Mummy, there is a person in my tummy. You horrid child. My mother cried. Admit it right away, you lie. You're simply trying to produce a silly, asinine excuse. You are the greedy, grassling rat. And that is why you're always fat. I tried it once for free. Believe me, Mummy, there is a person in my tummy. Just then, in nicely timed event, delivered me from punishment. Deep in my tummy, something stirred, and an awful noise was heard. A snorting, grumbling, grunting sound that made my tummy jump around. My darling mother nearly died. My goodness, what, what was that? She, she cried. cried. Just 
just then the dummy's voice came through. It, it shouted, Who's there? Listen you! I'm getting hungry! I want to eat! I want lots of dog and feet! Get me half a pound of nuts! Look snappy or I'll twist your gut! That's him! I cried! Now you believe me mommy? There is a person in my tummy! But, but mommy answered nothing more! For she had fainted on the floor. Audience, do you know what mime is? Mime is acting without talking. So, you have to guess what gifts do we get? The Academy for Creative Expression presents at the door, mime at the door. Panchayat, this year we will choose him. They say that, don't they? Of course they do. Seven years ago, when Papa was pigs in the village, scavenge of pigs to feed the deer, he got so much praise for it. But now there are more pigs, and they cause no dirt. So the people are sad. 
I know all of Bob's actions have become like that. Useless. I keep these things secret from him. I do not tell him. And why should I? We must thank Karina. She spoke to Papa about my panchayatsi. She insisted. He listens to her. Thank Karina. If she does some little thing, it is all thanks, thanks. I don't tell you what I do. All right then, tell me about pigs. Pigs? Reforms. That is what is important. For the poor. But you can't understand what I am saying. Reforms. That is what is important. Do you see a laser walking down the street sometimes like a king, throwing stones, throwing sticks at the pigs? And what does Papa say about that? What does Papa say about his favorite son? Ah, this son does not understand. Huh? Is he a child? Papa does not know how mean a son's mind is. Oh, he understands everything. Hey, it's Saturday, so where are we partying? Oh, you know what? I know of a place where the music is also very good. And it is known as the Ace Party. What are we waiting for? Let's go. The Academy, Academy for, for Creative, Creative Expression, Expression presents Shape of You. The club isn't the best place to find a lover, so the bar is where I go. Me and my friends at the table doing shots, tripping fast and then we talk slow. And you come over and start up a conversation with just me And trust me, I'll give it a chance now Take my hand, stop it, and the man on the jukebox And then we start to dance And now I'm singing like, girl, you know I want your love Your love was handmade for somebody like me Come on now, follow my lead I may be crazy, don't mind me Say, boy, let's not talk too much Grab on my waist and put that body on me Come on now, follow my lead Come, come on now, follow my lead First day, mm. you and me are thrifty, so go all you can eat. Fill up your bag and I fill up the plate. Mm. We talk for hours and hours about the sweet and the sour and how your family's doing okay. Mm. And leaving, getting a taxi, kissing the backseat, tell the driver, make the radio play. And I'm singing like, girl, you know I want your love. Your love was handmade for somebody like me. Come on now, follow my lead. I may be crazy, don't mind me. Say, boy, let's not talk too much. Grab on my waist and put that body on me. Come on now, follow my lead. Come, come on now, follow my lead. Mm -hmm. I'm in love with the shape of you. We push and pull like a magnet do. Although my heart is falling too. I'm in love with your body. Last night you were in my room. And now my bed sheets smell like you. Every day discovering something brand new. I'm in love with your body. 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 Every day discovering something brand new. I'm in love with the shape of you. Performance, coordination, teamwork, the presentation as well as the confidence of the kid was really uh, unflinching confidence and it was flawless. I'm extremely happy the way the kids are grooming, doing and been taken care of. I'm really relieved and feeling very proud about my kids that today at the a very tender age they are getting amazing exposure and such exposures are required for the uh, personality development of the kids and giving them lots of confidence to face the audience. Bravo to Ralph Padamsi, cause thank you so much. The show is very, very cool. Nice. 
and it was Bagula. Bye bye everybody. You are one two three Bagula. So I've seen Soumya uh, Soumya Kothari. She is my daughter. She has been coming uh, with Royal Padmasi I think for the past three years. Today's performance was exemplary. Uh, what I felt is uh, she has improved a lot. She has gained a lot of confidence. And she performed with panache, style, and I think she's loving it. And that's what that's what is uh, coming forth from most of the performance. And I hope it continues. All the best. Well, technically, uh, sorry, I have this habit of saying technically. I don't know why. Um. So I was <laughs> mostly the funny part was when she was when she was doing with William Shakespeare's plays. Yeah, that was. The, it was very funny. Uh, a little part was also like the part when, um, like when Abhishek had sa said that um, I got those uh, which that dialogue he said. I got those dialogues from that the way of speaking from his witty mother. Then my sister said, "Witty, witty mother, unwitty son." It was hilarious. It was the most hilarious thing ever.